Okay, yes, great adjustments. You like that? That looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's so inviting. I knew that would work beautifully, and it does. Color change makes just a world of difference on the cover. Okay, everything looks great. I think one of the most important, oh, this right here, um, mission statement, I would move that down so it starts at, at the same, um, uh, the same horizontal mark as, as the history. So if we move that over roughly, let's just pull a guy. Roughly that would be right there. Move that up and we can see that mission statement lies above. That guide is at two, roughly two and a quarter. Um, and then we come up here and this would be at uh, less than two. So you want to align that, especially so early in the presentation. So it will create a nice cadence. A um, couple of other areas, uh, just minor stuff. The left-hand page size is larger than your right-hand page sizes throughout, so you'll want to make those consistent. Um, let me see one other area I found. And this is minor, but you'll want to you want to fix this for your final presentation. Posters, right here. Posters. See how short that line, uh, that uh, text block is. So if we, I'm going to just put my court cursor where that average line ends right there, and we can see that the other text blocks are much wider. So that would need to be uh, consistent as well. And then there's another area on the right-hand page. Where was it? Excuse me for going so fast, but this is quite often how I go through work to check for consistency. Um, your, some of your rags are creating a uh, pattern. So yeah, I would I would definitely give this to fine tune, fine tooth comb before you, you hit uh, your final portfolio with this, check your rags, make sure they're really consistent. Um, where was that? Okay. Okay, I remember what it was now. It's right here okay so this page right here you've got your um text block up here that's just kind of sitting up here it's, it's not really following any any logical um placement other than the fact that there's an old place right th place right here what i would do is i would just pull a guy down drop it right there there's your baseline for your left column of text i would move this down and i would also preserve that right margin Okay, so place it right here. Okay, so your text block would be something like that, or a little bit, well, actually, it would be like this. Um, which would have, would actually have you re have to reduce this image here and then move these tickets up here. And that would fall naturally in place. I think that would cre create a, a much more comfortable feel for the, this spread. Um, other than that, it, this is fantastic. And like I said, the fact that you're working so fast is such an, such an asset, so fast with really good results. Okay, so um, just wonderful work. I mean, I, I've really been a fan of this piece for a, a while now, as you know. Now, I'll address your email here. Um, yeah, I'll be glad to, I'll go over any work you want me to. If you want to shoot me work, well, even if the class is closed, that doesn't mean that you can't shoot me work and get feedback on that. But what I think he's talking about here is and, and I just want you to know that this is not an atypical situation. This is very common where you go through several months of, of interviews and really get down to it where you're thinking, wow, they're going to hire me. And then at the end, they don't. And it, it happens. It happens. But just don't lose, you know, just 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 don't lose your your um, your competitive edge and don't let it get you down. It happens. I think what he's talking about here is showing um, real world pieces. And, I, you know, typically when somebody's talking about real world pieces of portfolio, they're talking about actual client work. And the thing that I and I, I think that there might be some confusion here, because right here, it seems like you're um, you, you're you're interpreting this as real world pieces like mock ups, like real world pieces like. This. Um, but these, you know, this is great for a portfolio piece, but as far as, as, I mean, it's pretty much obvious, it's obvious that it's student work. And that's okay, it's going to work perfectly in a portfolio. As far as addressing these comments here, real world pieces, I think what, what this designer is talking about is actually having real world client work in your portfolio, which is a catch-22 for any student, as we know. There is a way around it. My recommendation is to do as much freelance work as you possibly can. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to tell the, um, the, the 
person who's looking at the real world work that you've had experience dealing with clients, you've had experience dealing with printers, etc. So I think that's pretty much what he's talking about here. I don't think he's talking about like this this type of real world mock-up. Um, I hope I'm understanding and I'm not misinterpreting the question. If I am, please feel free to let me know. You know, I'll be glad to address it. But anyways, great job. I'm I'm just loving it. I pulled oh by the way, the issue link it doesn't work. Watch. See, it's showing something went wrong. Try it again. So I'm not sure what's wrong with that. But that's cool. I'll, I just pulled the, the PDF from the, um, your uh, submission the final presentation. So, all right. Awesome job, Brian. If I can do anything for you at all, you know, keep my contact information. You've been wonderful. <laughs> I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man.